Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to set up a simple player movement class just to have something to work with and we're also going to be making the interaction that opens and closes the dialog box inside of the game. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new folder here called dialog system and I'm going to go ahead and drag all of these into the folder and then I'm going to go ahead and create a very simple player class because I don't have a player in my game. In reality, I expect you to have your own player in your game because this isn't really a tutorial about player movement. So go ahead and fire up a different tutorial if you need help with that. I'm going to make a simple top-down sort of controller where I can just move a primitive circle around just to have some sort of movement going on to demonstrate how the player will interact with interactables. I'm going to make a new c -sharp script called player and I'm going to open that up in Rider. get rid of all the default stuff right here. I'm going to make a private const float move speed and I'm going to set that equal to 10. I'm also going to have a rigid body which I'll call RB and then in the start method I'll just get the rigid body just like that and then in the update method I'm going to call vector2 input is equal to new vector2 and then I want to get input dot get access raw horizontal and finally input dot get access raw vertical and finally I'm going to call rb dot move position rb dot position plus input dot normalized multiplied by whoops move speed multiplied by time dot fixed delta time just a very basic way to get the player moving around i'm also going to get rid of these just like that all right back in unity i'm going to go and add a circle and i'm going to reset the transform i'm going to add the player script i'm going to add a circle collider and i'm also going to add a rigid body and I'll set the rigid body to be kinematic so that gravity doesn't affect it. And now when I hit play, you'll see that I got some very basic movement where I can just move this circle around. All right, so back in Unity here, we're going to open up the dialog UI and we're just gonna get rid of this test call to the show dialog right there. And we're also going to get rid of the serialized dialog object that we use to test the dialog. And then once we come back into Unity and hit play, you'll see that the dialog box is gone and I can just move my circle around. Okay, so next up, we're going to set up a very basic interactable um, object, which the player can get close to and press E to interact with. And then the dialog box will pop up and show the dialog object's contents. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the dialog system folder. Let's go ahead and create a new script called iInteractable and let's open that up in our text editor and we'll essentially need to get rid of everything in here including all the namespaces and the mono behavior inheritance because this is going to be an interface and this interface will contain a method called interact which takes in the player just like that. Now an interface is essentially just a contract that other code can implement to say that hey I implement the methods or the properties defined within the interface and I'll show you how that works in just a moment. First of all let's open up the player class and we'll go ahead and create a serialized reference to the dialog UI and we're also going to make a getter for the dialog UI so let's go ahead and do that. Right, there we go. And finally, we're also going to make a public I interactable interactable, which will be able to be set and read from from the outside, just like this. And so inside of the update method, which is going to say if input dot get key down key code dot e, then we want to say if interactable it's not equal to null interactable dot interact and we'll pass in this instance of the player just like that and you'll see my IDE here suggests we use something called 
null propagation. If we go ahead and do that, it's just going to say interactable.interact the exact same way, but it's going to put a question mark here. And these two bits of code, this one and this one, are semantically equivalent and they do the exact same thing. So you can just use whichever one you prefer. I personally prefer this one, so let's stick with this. Okay, so inside of the dialog UI, we're going to go ahead and add a new public bool called is open, and this will be get private set. And this way, only the dialog UI can set whether it's open, but outsiders can check whether it's open. And so in the show dialog, we're going to say it's open is equal to true. And in the close dialog box method, we're going to say is open is equal to false, just like that. And then if we come back into Unity, we're going to go ahead and add a new C sharp script called dialog activator. And we'll go ahead and open that up in our text editor. Get rid of all the default methods and the namespaces. And so this class is going to handle the, um, the call to the dialog UI interaction. And the way this is going to work is it's going to implement the I interactable interface. And you'll see that my IDE is complaining that the interact method has not been implemented. So if we go ahead and do that, we just do private, oh, sorry, public void interact player player. And now it's happy. And this is essentially just going to say player dialog UI show dialog and it needs a dialog object. And since this is the dialog activator, well, we're going to go ahead and add a serialized field, private dialog object, just like that. And we'll pass this dialog object in right here. And so if we pop back into Unity, we'll just go ahead and set this up real quick. So we're going to add a new sprite. I'm just going to add a circle here. I'm going to make it red and also add a circle collider, make it a trigger and give it the radius of three or probably two and add the dialog activator. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the test dialog object. Now currently this doesn't do anything, but essentially what it's going to do is it's going to make it so that once the player goes in here and presses E, then this reference will be set inside the player and then this bit of dialogue here will be triggered. And so let's go ahead and create that right now. First of all, we're going to go ahead and rename this to player. And I'll also give it the player tag because we're going to be needing that in just a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our text editor inside of the dialog activator. We're going to make an on trigger enter 2D and on trigger exit 2D method. And in the enter method, we're going to say if other dot compare tag player and other dot try get component out player player. So this just checks, does this have the player tag and does it have the player component? Then we want to say player dot interactable is equal to this. And we are just going to copy and paste this line here, put it into the on trigger exit method. But we're also going to say if player dot interactable is dialog activator and the dialog activator is equal to this, then we want to say player dot interactable is equal to null. So in the case that there are multiple active or you have different types of interactables, this guy only says that it's null once it's sure that it's the current interactable. All right, so if we pop back into Unity here and wait for that to compile, and then we go ahead and hit maximize on play and hit play. Then, oops, one thing we forgot or one thing I forgot, we need to set the dialog UI field here. So let's just go ahead and drag the canvas into that. And then we're going to go ahead and hit play. And we'll see that once we get close here, press E, it shows the dialog. And we can say no, for example. And also I can move, as you can see, while the dialogue is typing. So let's just go ahead and quickly fix that by going into the player class. And when we get the input, we just want to say if dialog UI dot is open, then we just want to return. And there we go. We've got the basic interaction set up. And once I go ahead and interact, you can see I can move around. And if I go here and press E, I can no longer move. Once the dialogue is finished, however, 
I can move again. And so that's essentially how you want to set up the uh, interaction between dialogue activators and the player and the dialogue UI. And so I obviously expect you to set this up to work uh, for your own specific game. I've just used these basic two circles as an example because we're focusing on the dialogue implementation here. But in the case you have a platformer or a 3D game, you'll obviously just have to adapt to that. But the code is going to be pretty much the exact same. So hopefully this demonstrates something useful to you that you can use in your game. All right, that's gonna do it for me for this time. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.